these last two. It's Jen, also known as Quirks and Stitches. I'm going to just breathe because this has not been a fun process so far, but I have so much that I want to talk to you guys about that I just need to have it happen and be done. Um, there are happy things to be said, but right now, can I start off by venting about technology just for a minute? We've been having a lot of issues with my computer, so um, I don't know what the solution is going to be because I'm really not ready to buy a new computer. So um, anybody has tips on filming and software and things to use on a Mac? I definitely appreciate it because whatever is happening to my computer does not like how we have been filming for the past two years. So um, anyway, I'm breathing, mm -hmm. drinking a little beer. And I'm going to talk to you about some cross-stitch. So that's just what's going to happen. Um, I will first say that March was a crazy month for me. I started out with full intentions of doing Stitch Madness. Granted, I was pretty late to the game. Um, but I decided I was going to do it. And I did. I had all my projects kitted up. I filmed, I think, once during the whole situation and time frame. And then life just exploded. So when I kitted up, we were in the process of purchasing a house. Um, so when I was kidding up, I was very conscious and I kitted a lot of houses. And I, I think I said when I was filming, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to find a house. We did, you know, that was, and that was great. Um, so the pressure of, of house and moving and all that kind of stuff, and then throw in COVID, it was just like, forget it, <laughs> forget it. So, um, you know, it was just, it was a month, but it is done. I, I was not nearly as organized as my mother would have liked me to have been. Sorry, mom. Thanks for picking up my slack. Um, but we have a house and this is my floss tube room. So um, some of you have seen some pictures on Instagram, uh, but this is probably the room that sold me completely on the house. I will be eventually doing a house tour, but um, let me tell you, moving in the middle of the pandemic has been a little bit interesting. And some of it is, you know, some of it we could have done a little bit more, like I could purchase furniture online and I could do that stuff. I don't like to buy those big things without seeing them. Um, but then the other hiccup and hold up is, is that a lot of my furniture is actually coming from my mom because she is going to get new stuff and I'm going to take her leftovers, <laughs> which has happened a lot of times in my life. I like her decorating style, so I will gladly take them. Um, but beings that there aren't furniture stores open for her, I'm not going to, I don't want to just take her stuff and have her on a card table, you know, in the middle of her living room or dining room or whatever. So, um, we're kind of in this limbo state and we weren't sure exactly how much we were actually going to move in and be settled here. Kind of figured it would be a slow process, but you know, then you get a house and it's like, I want to be there. Um, so we're pretty much here. We got a bed. That's good. You know, it's not our bed. It's our, what we'll have in our guest room, but we have a bed that we're sleeping on and that's nice as opposed to air mattresses, which was a bit fun the first couple nights, but we're getting settled. So this is my, my favorite space in the house. Uh, I'll describe the house a little bit. So sorry, I'll be brief. But, um, when we were looking for houses, I really figured that I would end up with farmhouse. Like we're in Ohio, we're in farm country. Like yeah, farmhouse. That's what Jen's going to want. Um, and I, like, we were looking at all sorts of different type style houses and, and Brandon would like show me ranchers and I'd be like, I don't want a rancher. I need levels. First of all, I need there to be stairs. And I like like elevation and I like those sorts of things. And I don't want a ranch. It's a rancher. Um, but it does have, so our basement, we do have a basement, which was, I, we didn't in our old house. We just had the crawl space. Um, so we have a basement that's three quarters finished. That's going to be awesome for like gaming space, den, all sorts of stuff, um, down there and a guest room. And it's just going to be a, it's a great space. Um, but then the basement opens out to our backyard. So while we're only in you know, our main living is on one floor, there are levels and we do go outside in levels. So there's a patio space outside our back door, our basement door, and then we have the deck off of our kitchen and ended up with a huge property for Brandon to have to mow, but we have a riding lawnmower, so it works. <laughs> um, so, you know, we're settled. So between the deck and this space, I was just like, I have wanted a room like a sunroom. I love exposed brick. 
it was just kind of like, okay, this is it. So this is going to be my floss tube space. Not going to necessarily be my stitching space, but for now, this is, this is good and I, it's getting there. So I have a ton of stuff to hang up, but it's again, really hard to do when you don't know what your furniture layout is going to be. So like, I don't want to hang, you know, I usually hang around my furniture. So, uh, I have stuff everywhere. So I was going to show you a little spin of this room just so you could see, um, the family that lived here before we did were uh, homeschoolers and they actually had like seven children in the space. They just had their eighth child, which was why they were looking for a bigger house. Um, I don't know how they have that many people. I mean, this is a great space for us though. Like we've got rooms that don't have to be multi-purpose to like Brandon has his office. I can have my office that since I'm working from home now, I can have a craft room. I can have a guest room, you know, so, so that's nice. Cause that's a complete change from our little starter home that we had in Pennsylvania. Um, but it's, it's just a little quirky. Some of the things. So when we saw the house, she used this space as our homeschool space and there was the blackboard and I was like, Oh, I love blackboards. I wonder if it'll stay, you know, but it's not like a, I'm not going to write it into a contract that the blackboard needed to stay. So I was super excited when we came in on moving day and it was still here. Um, so I it was like, that would be perfect for like my whip wall. So I do have my whip wall set up. You can see there's three rows of whips. Uh, the top two are the ones that were started prior to 2020. And the bottom one is new starts, except for seeking refuge. Cause I haven't gotten that card made up yet. And you'll see, I have some of my like old stitchings sitting there because I was going through all of my projects because I stitch a lot seasonally. So I have a lot of Halloween. I have a lot of Christmas, um, that I just needed to like get sorted a bit so that I had maybe a tub for Halloween and a tub for Christmas. So when it's time to switch the seasons, cause I don't leave my seasonal stuff up all year long. Um, so I have it actually all out. So I posted the picture on Instagram, but I'll show you guys. So we turn and there's just tubs and tubs of cross stitch. So those are windows that look into our living room. Um, and all my cross stitch sitting out is stuff that I think I can probably hang up right now. So, um, I'm going slowly to not make you sick by the turning. I sped up a little bit. So that this is my stitching space, you know, my, my floss tube space and, uh, it's, it's getting there and I love it. And if I could just get technology to work, everything would be great. So, so when I filmed on Friday, I showed you all the stuff that you didn't get to see it, but I did show you all of the things that I, uh, stitched kind of in the intro. I didn't go back through madness because, um, it was just a lot to pull out. I did, I started about I think 16 projects during madness. Um, I think I, I don't remember how many I showed you, but I have a new plan for mania. So <laughs> I decided I was just gonna pretend, you know, eventually you'll see all the projects. Um, anyway, it, it will happen, but I, I had other things I wanted to show you today and I didn't want this to be a forever long video. So I have some, announcements. I have some finishes to show. And then at the end, I know there have been some people asking about counting of stitches and things like that. So I figured I would give you a little glimpse into how I count my stitches. And then while I wasn't super organized for my move, I was busy <laughs> organizing how I would track my stitches. So I've created this whole tracking system that is completely pointless and don't really know the purpose of it, but I'd love to share it with you. So if it's something that sounds interesting to you, I will be sharing that towards the end of the video, but I will save it till the end. So those of you that are like, I don't count stitches and that's not something I ever want to do. I was one of those people at one point in time. Um, you can tune out. So that's the plan. Um, so let's see, where do we want to start? Let's show, let's show some hauls. So I was out at craft gallery because they had like a curbside pickup and I had to get a little bit of my fix in. Um, so we were out there this weekend and I, I did pick up some new stash. So let's, let's go ahead and show some of this stuff. Um, this first one, it's an oldie. It was, it's all in a row, Bent Creek. And I stitch, I've stitched a lot of these rows. I've done, um, the Noel row, the row, no, Quaker Noel row, which is Christmas. I've done their Christmas row. I've done spooky row, the St. Patrick's day row and the neighbor, all some, something about 
Neighborhood Row, maybe? Something like that. But I don't have a lot. So there are a lot of them are seasonal. Neighborhood Row can be up most of the time. But since I have two Christmases, I have two frames that hold these. Oh, I did the gnomes in the garden row, too. Um, and so I saw this one, and I was like, it's very simple and very plain compared to all the other ones. But then I read about it, and it was the first one they ever did. So I was like, well, that would be a really nice one just to have up and be able to swap out seasonally. Though I think maybe the stitch count is less, so I don't I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, there's actually it says on here 26 of these rows have been designed and released at this point. That's a lot. Um, so pick this one up. Um, also, Annie B's has some really cute new stuff. So this one is called Thread Needle Street, and I like because I I actually have a sewing room now and a craft room. So it says we don't say good night till our stitching is complete. That's how we roll on here on Thread Needle Street. Uh, so I thought that one was cute. And I saw Diana, I think it was Diana. It is Kismet was stitching this, the Lucy Beam, I Will Cut You. <laughs> it's just adorable. I love it. So that one got added. Um, this Project Quarantine. Sorry for the glare on these. And then Mary Mary Needleworker. Had to do it. I love it. So very sewing themed, but uh, I will eventually have a sewing room all up and, and ready to go. Um, and I did pick up one other pattern that I was wondering if I could convince some of you guys to do a sale with me in June. Um, they had this book at um, Craft Cali Celebrate. That's Teresa Cogart. She It's her 15th year anniversary book so um she released a bunch of little patterns and i love this little one up here it's like a little garden and at first i thought it was very christmasy but it's not and so i might have to change some of the greens i don't know um but it's it's very simple it's called a teeny garden and it's just really cute there's butterflies and there's the cat and a dog so i was like it's it just kind of screen i don't know i really like it so i'd love to sell this with some people if you would be interested um i do know craft gallery has these available and they told me when i was there that if you call in and order through them they'll give you 10 percent off if you mention that you're part of the sale so um we'll do a teeny garden sale is what we'll hashtag it and unless i think of something more clever um but I, it's it's just a very cute little it should be a quick little stitch but i mean that one and this one up here the little farm is super cute so if you'd like to join in with me um and you already have a copy or if you don't have a copy craft gallery has them available um and 10 percent off can't beat that so um that will be happening we'll be starting at june 1st what day is june 1st let's look june 1st is monday we could start it on monday finish up mania immediately start something new let's do it let's do it june 1st do we want to start on a weekend give me some feedback guys on start date It'd be sometime like that first week in june so we can either start june 1st or we could do the friday and start going into a weekend you tell me what would work for you so um love to hear if you're interested in joining in with that so that was the haul that i picked up adding to my ever-growing stash I have to figure out how to organize here i need bookshelves badly very 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 badly so it is may 4th which means it is mania i have a big book i do um i've actually had time to like do cross stitch planning which makes my heart happy um so mania I don't know what I was going to do for it. I didn't have any inspiration when I started out the like when I was ending April. I was stitching a lot here, but I was having trouble finding like my piece that was calling to me to work on. For a while, I was working on life after death um, as we were at my mom's house wondering if this move was actually going to happen. I kept doing his eyes on the sparrow because I was like, God's got this. I don't have to worry about it. He's got it. Um, so that was kind of my reassurance. And then we got here and it was just too big of a project for the spacing I have because I have like a chair and like I have a set of nesting tables and that's all I have around me. So like that project having the big, huge piece of fabric and just wasn't wasn't working. Life after death was monochromatic. So it was just the one piece and or one thread color that I could didn't have loss everywhere so that was working better for me but it was like every project that I went to pull out wasn't 
wasn't doing it. And I'm like, I need to like, I'm, I'm not ready to start all of these new things. Like I really don't want to start a thousand more things. So I was toying back and forth with what I was going to do because it was like, well, I do have the, the rest of the things I kitted up for madness. I could do, you know, 15, 16 new starts, whatever, you know, and do it spaced out during mania. But that was like giving me more anxiety because I'm also feeling this. I want things finished and I, I just don't feel like I'm ever going to finish these things. And I went from last year where I was counting or participating in all the challenge groups that I was like forced to work on different projects to this year where I don't have a system and I haven't really even been doing like the acrostics or the holiday stuff so it hasn't sunk yet with what I'm what I'm going to be doing so I, I was like I don't know how to do mania so now I, you know I, I have my thought processes that I do and I was like well what if I like travel chronologically through my whips and I pit, pull, pull out a whip and I work on it for a certain amount of stitches. And immediately I thought like 500 was what I would do. But I can't just say I'm going to stitch on something for 500 stitches. I have to have a reason why it's going to be 500 stitches. And in my head, like 500, you're, you're going to see like some sort of progress. And um, some of my projects, it's going to finish them. And then, but it's not as much as like a thousand. Or like when you're doing a thousand stitches, it feels like a commitment um, so I was like, I'll do 500, but I still wasn't enough of a reason. So then I was like, well, no, I'll do 520 because it's May 20. So the month of May is number five, 20 year, 20, 520. So I'm doing mania 520. That's my plan. <laughs> and I'm going chronologically through my whips. So I have started and the projects I'm going to show you my stitching today are, are my oldies. Like they're, they're my oldest ones that are there. And actually... I've caught up a lot. Like I only have two projects that were done prior or started prior to Madness 2018, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, but it's, it's a little, it, it's, my hope was going into it that it would give me enough time working on a project that it would re reignite why I started and why I want to finish that project and hopefully give me like renewed passion for them. And so far I have to say it's kind of working. Like even the projects like I was dreading pulling out, I'm like, oh, okay, I could, I could work on this for longer than 520 stitches. I'm not like, I'm really trying to keep myself to 520 ish. Um, you know, except for some, because <laughs> mind of Jen, you know, can't just make it be easy. Um, and, and the other thing I think is important with this was I wasn't saying to myself, I have to get through all my projects because if I look at that, there are 76, six whips on that wall, 77 include Seeking Refuge. That's way more stitches than I usually get in in a month. Like if I'm like really realistically looking at how many stitches I consistently put in daily to get through 77 projects doing 520 stitches is going to not, it's going to be way over my typical stitching amount. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to say I had to do it. It's just, how far can I get? I don't know. Let's try. So I made a tracker because, hi, I'm Jen. Um, and I put it in my planner, my 24-hour cross-stitch planner. So you can see all of my whips are going down. I'm going to just set this down here. And they go down this way. I have a space to check if I've done it. I have a space to record the stitches. And then you see I have this like little blank thing here. This, there's H's and there's A's there for some of the projects. So if it has an H, it coordinates with one of the holidays, for the May holidays for 24 hours of cross stitch, because I haven't done those for a while, and I was like, I miss doing that. And if there's an A, it coordinates with the acrostic for 24 hours of cross stitch. If I get to one with an A, though, so all of these I'm doing 524. If it's an H, that's fine. I'm doing more than what's necessary for the holidays, but I'm trying for at least 520. For my acrostic ones, I am going to try for the 1200 that I typically try for. So those ones I will be doing a little bit more. So you can see my first um, one that I'll be trying for 1200 will be Skeleton Keys by Not Forgotten Farm. So it's going to, it's you know, got a little bit of heft to it, some of it, but I spaced them out. I did pretty good. There are um, four columns. So there's, well, five columns. So there's this page. I have another page after it. I don't think I can turn the page like this. I have another page after it, full. 
And then I have one that just has almost all the way down that column of my projects. I left a bottom, a blank space at the bottom, because if I finish all the projects in this row doing the 520 or the acrostic 120 or 100 1200, um, I am going to allow myself a mania start. So I have to finish 16 and then I can do a start. And then, so I feel like that's going to give me the motivation to keep going and then see how far I get. Like I said, so far I've been pretty pleased. Oh, but I'm also, so that gets me the holidays and the acrostic for 24 hours. But I also have that 24 hour challenge in the group too, which is usually just done to stitch for 24 hours during the month. But I was like, what if I pick a project and say that one project is going to get 24 hours during the month? So that's a new goal for me this this time. So and it's it's one of my acrostic challenges. So that one instead of being the 1200 stitches will be 24 hours worth of stitching. And I chose seeking refuge for that. So that's a project that I'm pulling out consistently during the month because I found that I really do like that and I like being able to see big progress in a piece. So like I'm right now I'm trying to kind of find the I probably I've been starting my morning with my coffee and before, cause I don't have my commute anymore. Before I start work for the day, I, um, I work on that for some time. And so far I've done like a little over two hours. It's the fourth, but I didn't want to say like I had to do a set amount each day because if I miss a day, then I won't do it. So it's just, you know, I could spend six hours on a day doing that on a Saturday when I just want to stitch for hours upon hours on end. So, this is my mania plan. I have rambled about it for quite some time now, so I think it's time to show you some stitching. So my first and oldest whip that I worked on was the, I don't know how to say it. It's the French word for joy, J-O-Y-E-U-X, Noel. This was in, um, a magazine, cross stitcher magazine, and I don't remember which one, but I can find out if anybody is interested in it. It's a huge piece of fabric, and I think I've talked about it before, because uh, I was gonna do it. They have it like as like a wall hanging, and so that was what we cut the fabric for. But I'm just gonna do it as a pillow at this point. Uh, I was always scared to have it as a pillow with pandemonium because she uh, threw up a lot, um, but that's not a problem anymore. So um, this is Noel. It's my oldest whip. I don't know when I started it. Um, and I did get my 520 stitches. I don't know. I think even more than that, a few more. Um, and it was all fill in in this color in this end. So I did some of the end over here and then I did stuff on the E. And it's not really my style anymore, but I think it will look really cute as a pillow. And you know what? I started working on it and it's when I can work on like sitting on my deck because I don't need light. It's a big count. I think it's 28 count something. Um, so I can totally just have it out and, and be stitching on it. And it's a lot of fill in. There are a lot of three quarter stitches, which I hate, but I, I got it out and I was pleasantly surprised that I didn't hate it. So there's that. Then my second oldest whip is his eyes on the sparrow. And I started this, um, I should have had my start dates for you. I don't know. Sometime in 2017, I think October of 2017. Started it with my mom. She finished hers. I am slacking. It is on my year long need to finish it. That's not going to happen, but we'll pretend. So, um, I have gotten the house. I'm leaving the house blank for right now because I don't know what color I want it. And I don't think I want it the color that it's charted. So, um, Michelle Cozy Egg, she did hers red and I love it. So I think that might be happening. I really liked the red of the house in Seeking Refuge because I felt like it was a very good brick color. Um, and since I have a brick house now, uh, I kind of thought maybe that, but I don't know. We'll see. I worked down in this section, got the fox and some of the tree and that weird little creature there and the owl. So someday, this will finish. Um, I had some people, so I was working on um, Andaforest Grew 
I'm not there yet. That's a that's a late start. I don't know if I'll get there yet. But we were talking about like storage of floss and things like that. And I'll show you what I did for this project. So I, I do, you know, I make the project cards. Um, I am hoping to get them on Etsy this week. I Maybe if I say it, it will really happen. I usually only use my project cards now if I'm using them with DMC. Um, just because I've kind of changed the way I organize my projects. But uh, this one is, is all the gassed and the week's dye works that, that were called for with it. Um, but so... I, I struggle with this project sometimes because you start, a, you know, you pull a thread, but there's only a little bit in the section that you're doing because you may, you know, only need it for like 20 stitches and you have all this extra floss and I didn't know what to do with it. So what I did was I just put little floss away bags on a ring because I, I always, I always do my, my floss pre-cut. That's always how I do it. Um, and I just, I load it on here for those of you that don't know. And then I will just pull one strand from there and it just pulls right out. Um, so that's, that is constantly, always, always, I do my DMC the same way. It's how I do my overdyed. Um, the only difference that I will make is if I'm using two strands, um, I will pull a full six and I'm, if I'm using two strands and it's an overdyed and I want to make sure that the variegation is right, I will pull the full six strand like length of the pre-cut and then I will match up and just keep those extra with it. I don't know if that makes sense. It does in my head, but <laughs> ask and I can clarify if it doesn't. Um, but that's always how I do my floss. So I, I made these little bags and each bag, each bag has a little card that has a like the color written on it so that then when I have the remnants of that floss I can just put the little bit of it in the bag ready to go and that way if like a lot of them it will use it just for like the eyes of an animal or something like that I can be like oh I can just pull from here instead of pulling a full floss length um, if I remember sometimes I forget and so I had a lot of people being like do that for I don't know if I had a lot of people, but I think it was a comment that I was like, well, I kind of do something similar to that for his eyes on the sparrow, which works for me for his eyes on the sparrow. And of course, Gru, I have five of these cards worth of floss. And it is just like this massive, overwhelming amount of floss. And I just can't, I can't get my peace with it. So I, I don't know. I struggle. We've got a system that might work with how I do my floss. Let me know. Because I'm not bobbinating. What's going to happen? No offense to anybody out there that bobbinates. I just can't do it. I I used to. That was how I organized it all. Doesn't work for me anymore. My next one. I have a new system for organizing my projects too. So you have to bear with me as I get them out of their project bags. This is another one that I said I was going to finish this year again. I don't think it's going to happen. This map of Hawk Run Hollow. And here I have some questions for you guys about this one. So this one I'm doing on 32 count light mocha. And I'm using the DMC, um, which I started it before I was really comfortable stitching with other stuff. Guys, I am so sunburnt. Can I just say? I didn't even realize that it was showing up until like now. I sat out on my deck yesterday. <laughs> And I am so red. I'm red from like here down. Like my, my arms haven't seen sunlight in a long, long time. But my face is really red, especially when I have like a fabric up to it. Um, so I'm stitching this on 32 count light mocha. Not my favorite, but I'm too far in. And I, I do like it from a distance. I, I It doesn't bother me. But I feel like it needs to be like dirtied up or something. Can you dirty it up after you've stitched it? think you can like could I coffee dye this when it's done I mean I know it would like tinge some of the white and stuff but that's okay right I don't know anything about that and I don't know if I have the guts to do it but I feel like this piece needs it um so I worked down here I did the boat and I did the fish and I did some of the school over here and again you know I pulled it back out and I was like okay I could work on this for a length of time I enjoy it so, serving its purpose, my little Mania 520, I'm, I'm okay with it. Then, 
So that was a start. That was my first March Mad or Stitch Madness start that I ever did. So that was March 1st, 2018. Um, so these next ones are all going to be from that Madness. And I finished a lot of them from that year, but I still have some that are sitting. This is another one that's on my ABC challenge that I'd like to get finished this year. And this is As a Crow Flies. And I feel like this one, it's the same as the... Um, the map of Hawk Run. It needs to be dirtied up a little. It's just a little bit too clean. Um, I'm doing this on 32 count lambs wool. And with the, the DMC Prairie Schooler, that's what they do. Um, but I've seen other people doing it on like a funner fabric. And I'm like, oh, I wish I had known about funner fabrics when I started this. So I worked on the red barn and a little bit on that and some of the trees. I struggle with this piece only because the lambs wool is so stiff that it hurts. So 520 stitches is like a good amount to put in and then stop because it just, it kills my finger pushing the needle through. Then I worked on, I'll show you the pattern of this one. I think this was in one of the patterns we're giving away too. This is uh, Great Pumpkin Conspiracy. I love this piece. I don't know what this is. Not sure what it is. And I decided, I, I kept, I have tr struggled with this piece because I haven't gotten very far on it. And um, I thought, okay, I just need to stitch a pumpkin. Maybe if I stitch a pumpkin, I will fall in love with this and it will be easier. And there was some, some of that definitely did happen. Um, the pumpkin I stitched looks like an Easter egg. So <laughs> I don't know, I need a different pumpkin now stitched. But I did some of it. I did some of the, the crow and the uh, leaves and things like that. But, um, yeah, I don't, it doesn't it look like an Easter egg? I don't know why. Uh, this is on 40 Count Luna by Lakeside Linens. And then today I started was my Latinx one that I'm doing. And this one I started, and I'm not, I don't have my 520 done yet. This one I started during Madness. And um, I don't know what my mother's computer is doing right now. It's like playing music or something. I'm not sure. Uh, it's the March You're on Chalk by Hands On Designs. I don't know what year it was from. And I started it during Madness, and it was my first go at like really over dyed and trying to stitch one over one. And it's weeks I work fabric, and I was trying to do one stitch at a time. And I hate white stitches on a good day, not doing one stitch at a time, not on weeks I works fabric. And it just was not a happy time. Or I don't feel like my stitches are neat, I don't feel like they lay nice. I haven't pulled it out since I stitched on it that one time. So I went to do it today and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Am I going to restart it and just do, because I had this vision of doing it one over one on this fabric, putting it in a hoop or a frame, whatever, and doing it one over one, but I don't have any frames here. So I was like, I don't want to hold up my whole <laughs> Mania 520 plan because I have not figured out how that's going to work. If like a piece really isn't calling to me, if I'm allowing myself skips, I don't know. I probably should. Because if I don't, I'll probably just like stop stitching altogether for the month. I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. I haven't had it need to happen. So this morning when I was getting this ready, I was like, I just, I'm not loving it. I'm going to restart it. And it's just a little thing anyway. So I pulled out some Black Ada from Brandon's stash. And as I was watching webinars today got a restart on it and I like it a lot better. Uh, I'm not doing individual stitches. It's really coming up. Not clear, but um, I don't know why it's not. It's very fuzzy. Um, but yeah, so I have, I think maybe like 120 stitches left to do and then I'm done with it for now. And it's making me not hate it. And I think I can get it finished this year, which is, it, that's part of the whole one of doing this is getting some of these things done so that I'm not feeling so intimidated by everything that I have started. So I'm glad I restarted it. I think I'll figure out some way to repurpose this and try maybe some one over one stitching on it. Um, I'm trying to give myself more freedom to restart things because honestly, I don't generally let myself. Uh, very few times that I'm like, yeah, let's just restart. 
And then I will show you my update on where I'm on it at I'm Seeking Refuge so far. So I've been working on that bottom section, getting those uh, leaves plotted in so that I can do that massive amount of fill-in. And I don't know if I'll be able to get it finished in these 24 hours from the month, but I'm, I'm thinking that that may be something that I continuously do with my stitching, is give myself a project that I'm aiming for 24 hours on, because then I'm going to hopefully get some major progress with it and be able to see some growth on some of my really big projects. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not making any guarantees that I will keep the same system going into June because I change my mind a lot. But, you know, I think it's it's a possibility. So that's what I've been stitching so far in May. Um, it's gone well. It's, it is. really. I'm really excited about it. I We'll see. We'll see how long that excitement lasts. Uh, I have a few finishes to show you, so let's go ahead and do that. This piece I started during Madness. It was the piece I wanted to do because... Um, I got it because of Emily's birthday sale, em Eclectic Possessions. She was doing a very scarlet birthday, um, and it was scarlet house pattern. So I had picked this pattern up and was going to do it. And then when I knew we were getting the house, it just felt like this was what I should stitch. And then I couldn't stitch on it because we thought we were going to lose the house, and so it was like this whole thing. But um, it was my it was my find comfort and peace at home because it's perfect for this time right now. Um, I changed some colors. I did a red for the house. The house is originally charted in white. And I, A, this fabric, it was really hard to see the white. And I was getting a brick house. So once I knew that the sale was pretty much going through, um, I decided to, to go ahead and do it. So I, I love this piece. And it has a lot of meaning because of the time frame and everything. I also finished Baby It's Cold Outside. This was started on February 14th um, as the reboot for the Lost and Floss Sal in memory of Leanne. And I did uh, change it up and chart it with the Cardinal that Beth Twist released um, because I just thought it was amazing that she did that for the community. And yeah, so um, thank you again to uh, Barb for letting us, you know, us kind of hop on with that and for Julie for everything that she did with um, the Lost and lost in stitchy wishes because um, that was totally her baby so this was uh it was a great piece to kind of meditate on and finish i don't remember the date i finished it i don't have it in front of me i also finished this piece nevermore by lila's studio i stitched it on 36 count navy bee by lakeside linens and um, had a little bit of a debacle because this color up here was, it's charted as blackboard. Um, and I thought that's what I used, but I got some, I ran out of it. You need probably two skeins, I think. And I ran out of whatever I had. And um, I got some more blackboard and it didn't look the same because whatever I'm using has like a bluish hint to it. Uh, so I think, it, I think I might've accidentally used black crow I don't know what I did. So I ended up down here. I did Black Crow instead of Blackboard. So I can't really tell. It was this piece I loved stitching. Like I, I, there wasn't any part of it that I didn't enjoy. You can see I've kind of gotten Edward, Edgar Allan Poe like thing. Like I love that. So I'm thinking my room that we're using as my office right now is eventually going to be like library guest room. So I'm thinking literary themes and um, Poe will probably live year round in there. I'm not going to just limit that to Halloween time. So um, what else can I say? If you haven't watched the recap from 24 hours last weekend, um, my mom and I are offering some patterns and things like that. So you should probably go check that out because instructions are on there. Don't mention giveaways. Don't do any of that kind of stuff. Um, but you should check that out and make sure you get the, the form filled out by Friday. I believe that's when the cutoff is this Friday, the 8th. Um, 
Yeah. So I also said I would just do a brief little, this is how I count my stitches. So if it's not your thing and you're going by, thank you so much for stopping out. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and thanks for bearing with me with the hair and the, um, you know, technical difficulties. Um, if counting stitches is your thing, okay, this is what I do. So this is not a good example to show you. Hold on, let me get a better book. I have, I got these little notebooks off of Amazon. I should have had one out. I got a set of 50 of these notebooks off of Amazon. They're traveler's notebooks. They came in bulk. It was great. What I do is I literally, as I'm counting, I write the date and then I total my stitches and I put down, you know, I stitch in segments or I like, so I'll pick, um, pick a section that I'm trying to complete or I'll or count a thread length or something like that. And I'll write it down. Um, I typically know that about on a 40 count fabric, I can get around 65 to 75 stitches per thread length. And um, it goes down per count of fabric as they get bigger. But I try to when I'm tracking, these two are a little bit, I was doing the border right there, so it was a little bit crazy. Um, and I knew I was just doing multiplying. But like if you see here, like I, I try to track about 100 stitches per line because then I have an, a guesstimate like when, I, when I'm counting up or if I'm shooting for 500 stitches for a, a session of stitching, I know, okay, I just kind of need five lines worth. Um, and then I just total it up and I have the amount next to me. I use a highlighter to mark like the last line that I counted. Um, I'm pretty systematic with when I stitch and if I have any questions, I usually am taking a start and stop picture before I go so I can be like, did I stitch this today or yesterday or whatnot? I don't really usually have to refer to that, but um, this has really worked for me. And so I do, I keep a notebook, one of these notebooks in each of my project bags with my patterns. Um, with the exception of if it's something that I haven't worked on or touched in a while, it may not have a, a notebook in it. And usually then what I, I'm doing for like mania where I know I'm pulling it out for this time, but I'm probably not going to touch it again for a while. I just keep one notebook for all of those projects. Um, but if it's going to be a project that I'm going to be consistently referring back to, it will get its own little notebook in a bag. Um, and I do keep once I finish a project and it's done, I will recycle the notebook and it will go into a different project. And then when I'm all finished, the plan is just to flip the notebook upside down because I only write on one side and then I can use it going backwards um, and multi-use. So these are going to get a lot of use. I think it was like $50 for 50 of them, which isn't bad. I think I'm, I don't even remember how much it was. They have been the best purchase. And I mean, I have 77 whips right now and I had over 150 last year and I am still have notebooks that don't have anything in them. So it, it, well worth what, and it gives it a weight to it too. Like I tried index cards and stuff, but I lost them and I didn't know where it was. This has worked really, really well for me. But then in Jen's head, I needed something I didn't need anything. I wanted a way to know how many stitches I count or have stitched in a month or the year or a day, you know. So I decided I needed to make a tracker. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to show you my screen and show you what I made to formulate the data that I'm keeping in those notebooks for absolutely no purpose at all. So bear with me one second. Okay. So you should be back and you should be able to see my screen right now. And what I've done is I'm in a uh, program called Numbers and it's a lot like Excel, but for a Mac. And you can see that I have over here a list of all of my projects. So if I scroll down, it's alphabetically all of the projects that I have currently kitted up. And um, each of them has an underline in it. They are all links to the different pages in this workbook. So you can see they're all there. If I add more, like I added Seeking Refuge, I was able to just sort it again and get it to be alphabetical. And then I have up at the top here in this line up here are all of the sheets for each individual pattern. So you can see these are listed chronologically though. So you're gonna see the projects that I was just working on, the Noel piece, the His Eyes on the Sparrow, um, 
This one I've already finished, but it still gets a page in here because I worked on it during 2020 and all the way so and forth. Um, for instance, if I wanted to see how many stitches I've worked on for His Eyes on the Sparrow, I can find it in my little table of contents. And if I click on it, it takes me to a project page for this project. Right here, I have the pattern details. So it's His Eyes on the Sparrow, it was by Heartstrings, the stitch count, what fabric I'm stitching it on, and the start date. I have a spot for all of the months of the year. And going down the left-hand column, it lists the um, different days of the year. So down here, I've got, um, oh, I don't know why her computer is bouncing. Um, I'm on my mom's computer. It does things that mine does not do. Um, so there's 31 days in January, so it goes here. There were only 29 in February, which is why those are blacked out. But you can see then on the 3rd of January, I put 13... 1,334 stitches in on it. Then it goes down. So it totals how many I did each month down here. And then over here, it totals how many I've done completely during the year so far. So, so far on his eyes on the sparrow, I've put 17,396 stitches in. If I click here, it takes me back to my table of contents. But I also wanted to see how many, a lot of times I stitch on multiple projects during a day. So I made a totals page. This one has zeros everywhere because there has to be formulas in all of the boxes, but it will calculate on January 3rd, I only stitched 1300 on his eyes on the sparrow, but I did about, you know, 800 more or something, however much that math is on a different project. So it's going to add up all of my projects total for that day and then add them up down here. So you can see this is my cumulative total for the year. I don't know what I'm using this information for. It just felt like I should have a way to track it and for it to be able to um, measure. You can see, you know, I, April was my best stitching month this year so far, although it wasn't far behind January. So uh, I think it's just that that kind of stuff is really interesting to me and I wanted a way to visually be able to represent it. So I do have all my projects, like I said, go all the way along the top. Um, I did add a few blank, I'll show you, sorry, let me get all the way over there. Um, a few blank ones, new start, new start, new start, just so they are already in the, the formulas. So I don't have to redo all the formulas anytime I add a new start in. Um, so that I was able to do that for like seeking refuge and easily add a tab in. Uh, so that is my newest little system. And because I use, I store everything on iCloud, I can pull this up on my phone after I'm done stitching for the night and just add in easily in the little box. Um, and it so far has really been working for me. So if you bear with me, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I should be back. Um, so that was what kind of had my focus <laughs> for a lot of the time I should have been organizing my move. But um, everything got done and it's, slowly we're almost all out of mom's house we still have some things we're going over tomorrow to get that finish up um but that's just how my mind works and how i like to i don't i'll probably stop doing it but at least there's a way to do it and it's easy to catch up on because i write the date in my notebook so if i forget one and i pull it out later i'm like oh did i stitch on that day or did i record it i can check that's how my mind works so that's been my stitching so far. I'm excited to keep going, see what happens and how much I get done this month, see if it's my best stitching month or if switching so many times limits the amount of stitching I get done. I don't know. Um, I have, I may, we'll see which starts I decide to do based on if I finish those columns. I have some that I'm, I'm eager to start, so we'll see if those happen first or if I get, that'll be what I, I feel called for on the day that it happens. Um, if you are interested in joining in in the uh, Teeny Forest Sal, I would love to have you stitch with me sometime in June. Give me some feedback. Um, available at the Craft Gallery if needed. And um, yeah, so I think that's I think that's all. Guys, I've done this too many times and I don't remember what I talked about here and other times and 
you know, it just all blends together. So I am off to finish that stitching. It is May the 4th, so I believe we will be doing some Star Wars watching today. Um, Brandon has been stitching. Brandon has been sewing masks. He got he, he got like super inspired and got my sewing machine out and was like, I'm going to make masks. I, he impresses me every day. Um, so he has been doing that and doing Zelda speed runs. Um, but yeah, so thank you to everybody that kind of offered encouragement and bore with me, bared with me stuck around when I was kind of complaining and moody and things um, and vacant and absent and all of that and uh, hopefully we'll figure out a system for getting updates to you guys here uh, I'd like it to be more consistent I'm really really trying oh oh other thing I got 4,000 subscribers I passed what that is unbelievable to me Thank you guys so, so, so much. Um, I am going to be thinking, I'm going to be doing something for that because never did I think that 4,000 people would want to subscribe to me rambling. Um, so that will be coming, but I want to get through the 24 hour giveaway stuff that we have going on. So that will be coming and will be being announced. I cannot believe. I was like, I looked the other day and I was like, what? How did that happen? So thank you so much. Um, I appreciate your feedback and your comments. I'm trying to get better about commenting and liking. Just know that every comment that is put in, I see and I appreciate. And you guys don't know. Like, I, I just, I really do appreciate every every person in this community. And thank you so much for letting me be a part of it it's like i talked to my mom and i'm like i finally found like my people that get me i'm not sure that's good but <laughs> thank you so i am going to get back to stitching um we have our grill that should be coming tomorrow so we'll be able to be enjoying the outside a little bit even more and hopefully i won't i'll get a base and we'll be red every time you see me um yes i hope your mania plans are going well keep making those x's and I will be back soon.